and welcome to my series of short videos in which we discuss how the Arduino interacts with various electronic components. Yes, in less than 15 minutes we'll go over the basics, how they can be used, hints, tips, tricks and traps. Stay tuned, let's learn about another one this week. Resistors. There are dozens of types of resistors and we're just going to cover a few which you'll find in the Arduino world. And I've got a few here on my workbench. Now these fixed resistors, two wire, passive components, is what you'll be using a lot of in Arduino type projects. And they're cheap and plentiful and you can get them from the Far East in all these different values um, for a very reasonable sum. Now, of course, that's not the only type of resistor we have, though. If we look at my workbench here, you see at the back here, these are some trimmer resistors, or trim pots, as they're known. Um, and I've got a couple here, so if I bring this close to the lens. So this little thing is a variable resistor, but it's not designed to be turned continuously, so it's not something a consumer would use. You'd put this in your circuit and then adjust this value here with a screwdriver, and turn it until the required voltage or effect was achieved and then it'd be left alone. Quite often you'll find these things then fixed by paint or glue or something inside circuits. So that's um, a trim pot. Now just a quick shout out for PCB Way, especially for beginners who perhaps have never done this before. It really is simple once you get your head around it. Create your PCB design in your favourite CAD program, KeyCAD or something like that, and then get your Gerber files ready and upload them when you click on this button here. Now the dimensions are not important, just put 100 by 100 here. Put how many you want here, remember it's $5 for 10 pieces, so put in 10 and then click the quote now button. But I want to talk to you about something else this week and that's about are you really going to solder SMT components because they will do it for you for a very reasonable sum of $30 but that includes your shipping so you sort of get it back don't you. Let's have a look what that means. Now this is the page you end up on when you specify how you want your board to be assembled, okay? And behind my head you can see that sign there, look, free shipping with this PC assembly, so bear that in mind. Now here you say, how am I going to source the components? The best way is to let PCB Way source them for you. You just give them a list of the components you want in a standard you know, spreadsheet format. So you say, I want these capacitors of this value and this size. So for example, you might say, I want a 100 nanofarad capacitor 0603, and that's capacitor 1. And then capacitor 2 is something else and so on. You just give them the entire list, they'll go away and find them, and believe me, components are cheap in China, so you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised at the cost. Now, having done all that, you specify down here um, whether you want through-hole components, uh, which side of the board you want soldered, either top, bottom, or both, and they'll just do the whole thing and send it back to you. It really is a nice way of getting a prototype to you back very quickly without having to get the soldering eye out. So, what are you waiting for? Have a go at PCB Way and try them out now. This one here is perhaps a more common version. This is a variable resistor, a single variable resistor. Um, goes all around 270 degrees from one position all the way around to the other. And what's happening inside here is the little wiper goes against a carbon track that's inside here. And they would be commonly used for things like volume controls, tone controls. In fact, very much like I have here on this little amplifier, that is a variable resistor, which is a volume control, goes from that position there all the way up around the other side. So that is a variable resistor, as is the base and treble control of this little amplifier. And uh, here's a little commercial product. This comes out of a fan, actually. And um, you can see here there's a little trim pot, which is a little bit easier to adjust because it's got this knurled ring on it. And they obviously have put that on there and they, they turn this to get the required value and then leave it alone. In fact, there's also a rather large resistor on there, very high wattage, that is a lot of current can pass through there. And if you look closely enough, look at the scorching around it, all this dark PCB where it's burnt. Unfortunately, that's why this failed. Probably not because this resistor failed, but because it heated up this electrolytic capacitor next to it not good to have electrolytic capacitors anywhere in the vicinity of heat and this one certainly did get hot look at that and finally we come on to smd resistors now this is a, a pack of smd resistors the actual resistor a single resistor 
let me put my hand behind, are those little square things in there. So it's that little tiny thing in there. And I've done quite a few videos where I've shown these and the soldering of them. And once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad at all. But you can buy these sort of resistors for use in printed circuit boards very cheaply. Now, obviously, what's happened here is that the, the sellers chopped them up into these lengths of 20, I believe it is, in any one strip, and then sold them as a complete package. What you'd normally do is end up on a reel like this, and there's probably a 1,000 or 5,000 resistors on a big reel that they use in PCB houses and they load them all up in their pick and place machines and some special little computer thing picks out each one of these little tiny resistors and puts it in exactly the right place on a printed circuit board. Right, okay, Let's now you've seen the physical outline of a resistor and what they look like and their different types. Let's concentrate a little bit more on these fixed value types and, well, why are they certain values? And um, why are some of them certain sizes? I mean, these, this is one size, and that one you saw at the back is a much, much bigger size, isn't it? Look at that. OK, let's have a think about all that then. So the first thing to get established is the symbol for a resistor. And the ANSI preferred symbol is like that. So you've got two wires, one at each end, just like you saw on the workbench, and this jagged line to indicate resistance. You can also find them, though, drawn in a sort of elongated rectangle shape like that. However, we're going to use this version here. Right, so as a typical example then, we have our UNO connected up to plus 5 volts VCC. We want to make it flash this LED on a GPIO pin. Let's assume that's GPIO pin 8. So we're doing a digital write on pin 8. And we're saying high and low with maybe a second's delay in between. So we end up with a square wave like this, up to 5 volts down to zero, up to five volts every second. Great, except that this LED does not require five volts. No, not at all. This LED requires two volts, and it probably requires something like 20 milliamps maximum. Okay, maximum. And the 20 milliamps, funny enough, is the maximum you should put out of a GPIO pin anyway to be safe. So let's err on the side of caution here and say, well, Let's bring it down to, say, 15 milliamps, just to be safe. It will still be bright enough to be seen. Some LEDs are very bright at lower currents. Some LEDs go down to 2 milliamps and are still bright. But we'll choose 15 for a standard LED out of the box. So how do we know what value resistor do we need here before we connect all this up and the other end of the diode up to ground? Well, there's two things. One, we know that the output from here is 5 volts because we're connected to 5 volts on VCC and the Arduino outputs whatever there is on VCC as close as makes no difference. So 5 volts is coming out here, but we need two of those volts to run the LED. So the way we calculate this is to say 5 volts minus 2 volts equals I want to get rid of 3 volts, that's the voltage drop across this resistor. We want to get rid of 3 volts. Except we can't do that just in isolation. We've got to say, yes, but at how much current we want to pass? And we know that it's 15 milliamps. 15 milliamps is in ampage 0 0.015 of an amp. Now, if we have a little mnemonic that's easy to remember, there's a slightly wonky triangle. But if we put V for volts at the top and then draw a line, and another one down there, we can now put current over here, represented by I, and that's always in amps, and this one, resistance, which is always in ohms. This is what's known as Ohm's law. He worked out that there was a definite relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And he gave his name to the resistance unit, of course. So now we know, if we substitute some of these with the values that we got, we say we want to get rid of 3 volts, and we want 0 0.015 of an amp, what does that work out to be? Well, that equals 200, what? 200 ohms. 
So that would be the value in here for an LED that requires 2 volts to run at 15 milliamps. If you wanted more current to run through the LED, perhaps you have a particularly higher powered one, the resistance would go down, perhaps to 180 ohms or 150 ohms. But if you had a an LED that required 3 volts to work, like a blue LED, always require more, this would drop even further. But what happens if you had a 1.8 volt LED that only required 2 milliamps to run? Well then this would be much higher, but you just plug in the values like this, the two values that you know, and get the third value out. It's so simple, isn't it? So we tend to put 200 ohm resistors in here, pretty much. Sometimes you might see 180, sometimes you might see 220, but whatever you find in there is enough to prevent A, this LED burning out, and secondly, to prevent your Arduino generating more than 20 milliamps down a GPIO pin, because that's the safe maximum to put out of any GPIO. So simple. Well, Mr. Ohms, thank you for that. Really useful. So one of the issues that everybody comes across when they first see these through-hole resistor components is to say, all those pretty coloured bands on these resistors, what do they all mean? How do I work out what the resistance is? It's very simple and it's all down to the resistor colour code. Very simple. Let's see how it works. So here we have a picture of a resistor and I've annotated exactly what the colours are. If you can see it's brown, black, orange and a little bit further away from the rest there's this gold colour. Now the gold isn't in this list because it's not a value. Gold and silver at the end simply indicate the tolerance of this resistor. So when we've worked out the value we can see how close it's going to be to the actual value. OK, brown and black, the first two bands here determine the value, and the last one is what's known as the multiplier. It just tells you how many zeros to add on the end, really. So if we look at brown, it's 1, black is a 0, and orange is a 3, so 10,000, otherwise known as a 10 kilo ohm, or just 10k, resistor. That's what that is. Now the gold band at the end and the tolerance band is always a little bit further away from the rest of them so you can easily identify it. Gold means it's within 5% of this value. So the manufacturers have said yes it's within 5% of 10k. You can also get silver which are not quite so good at 10% of the value and there are others like red and brown and they're very high tolerance unlikely to get those as part of an Arduino project, not unless you're going to pay a bit more money. OK, let's have a look at a few more. So here are some resistors. Can we work out what their value is? Well, there's a little trick in this one because if you notice the gold band at the end has been switched on some of them and they're not all in the same order. This is typical of the problem with through hole components. So you never know which way around the resistor is. But the trick is to find the gold, silver or other band that's usually a little bit further away from the rest of them to determine which end you start reading from. So we're going to start reading from this end here, furthest away from the tolerance band, and by looking up the values in this table here, we will say, right, the yellow is 4, the purple is 7, and the orange is 3. What does that mean? It means we have 4, 7, and 3 noughts, otherwise known as 47 kilo ohms. That's what that is. And it's within 5% of that value, plus or minus. OK, let's try another one at the opposite end. Here's one. Now, which way do we start reading this? The gold bands at the end, we can never start reading from this end. So we'll start reading from here now. So we say that's a 3, the white is a 9, the orange is a 3 again. So that's 3, 9 and 3 zeros, otherwise known as 39 kilo ohms. Great. Well, this all seems fairly straightforward, doesn't it? What happens if we get to something like this, though? It looks quite strange. It's all the same colour. Well, once again, though, the gold band is at the end, so we don't start reading from there. We start reading from here. So that's 2, 2, 2. OK, let's write that down. That's 2, 2, followed by two more zeros. So that's 2.2 kilo ohms. Or sometimes this will be written as 2k2 because the point can easily get misprinted or missed out, misread, 
So basically the K symbol goes in the middle, 2K2, 2.2 kilo ohms. Great. One final example then, this one here, which is a little bit different to the rest. Uh, once again, the gold is at this end, so we don't start reading from there. We read from here. So that's 1, 0, 1. What does that mean? It means, well, the first two we write down normally, 1, 0, and then we want 1 more 0. That's it, 100. That is the value, 100 ohms. Sometimes written as 100 R. Finally, this one here is different again. Gold's at this end, so we start reading from here. 4, 7, 0. No, it's not 470 ohms, is it? This one is 4, 7, and how many zeros do we want? None at all. None at all. So we don't put anything else after that. It's just 47 ohms. That's it. We've cracked it. Learn this little table here and you'll be well on your way. Now, there is in fact one trap here. The resistor colour code that I just showed you and that's on all these resistors here is what's known as the four band resistor code. So the first two are the value, the third one is how many zeros to add, and the fourth one is the tolerance. For some reason that I've yet to find out, somebody decided to invent a five band code and even a six band code. Now, it's a bit like learning Spanish, becoming quite fluent, and then discover you've actually got to read Portuguese. Similar, but most definitely not the same. So I don't buy resistors with a five-band code, and I think, slowly but surely, it's falling out of favour. There's no reason for a five-band code. It's just another band they've got to squeeze onto those resistors. Now, the good news is, of course, that on these SMD resistors, there's no room for coloured bands. They actually print the value on it, but you'll need a very good pair of eyes <laughs> and um, a magnifying glass or possibly a USB microscope to discover what the value is. But at least it is actually printed on resistors, unlike capacitors, where SMD capacitors do not have any value at all. You'll need a meter. Now, there's lots more we could talk about resistors, but remember, this is focused at what happens in an Arduino project. There are wire-wound resistors, high-power stuff. Um, unlikely we're going to be using many of those, and if you do, you'll probably realise that you need to get a higher-power one. Um, there are some more formula that you could learn that make life easier, but that little triangle one has served me very well throughout the years, and it's the one I use most of. So, yeah, I think as a beginner's primer, this is enough now for you to get... Um, au fait with resistors so i think we'll leave it there call it quits if you've got any questions please put them in the comments below and if you liked it if you thought this was worthwhile please do give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching